I think it's pretty safe to say that most metalheads have heard of the game Doom as well as the composer of the game's music, Mick Gordon. Because the Doom soundtrack is metal as it really kind of gets. Now, since Doom Eternal came out, there is more Mick Gordon tracks because he did the OST once again. But there was a falling out, some bad things happened, people didn't really know until now. Mick Gordon literally just posted on Twitter... Marty Stratton, ID Software Studio Director, lied about Doom Eternal Software OST events in a Reddit post that used disinformation to blame me entirely for its failure. Later, he offered me a six-figure sum to never speak about it, and the truth is more important. And, you know, you think it's maybe just going to be like a couple tweets or like a twit longer, but you click this link, and it's it's... It's a whole thesis. Like, my dude went all out. Look at this. Like, he's got some receipts <laughs> of what happened here. The situation is just beyond messed up. Basically, starting with him being offered to do Doom Eternal and not really getting any direction of any kind of gameplay footage of what the game's going to be like. Like, sure, you're in hell and it's Doom, but is there any actual gameplay footage, any visuals he can use for inspiration and creative, you know, help in any way? And having a lack of communication with the actual team, as well as being required to make two tracks a month, fully finished music, mixing, mastered, produced, which if you in any way have written music before or worked on music, you know how insane that that timeline is. Even though that actual game was two years away. From that, the company would just continue to kind of just ignore him. He'd offer solutions on ways to fix things that would still meet crazy deadlines with him working insane overtime hours. And they would just ignore it and say, no, nah, it's, it's your fault. Like, you just need to work faster. You just need to get it done. So even though there was no footage, he would take his best shot by just looking at concept art as well as text and resorting to imagination to help score the levels, which again, like you're, you're doing a whole game. You want people to play this game and feel immersed in those moments of where the songs and the soundtrack is going to be placed. He also had paying issues where the company just refused to pay him until they signed off on arbitrary things and they withheld payment on him for 11 months. With this being Mick Gordon's, you know, full-time thing. This is how he's making his income. You know, he's he's taking time away from his family, his friends, working crazy hours and basically just hoping he can pay his rent and the company's not even paying him for the work he is doing from that it gets worse uh the doom eternal soundtrack actually gets announced like an official ost in this collector's edition in which mick gordon was never told about so they never told him about this but they announced it at e3 with pre-orders available for this thing that mick gordon didn't even know he had to make yet now if the game finally being done mick finally gets paid after 11 months pre-artists have gone out people have bought this thing expecting this ost which mick's name is on his reputation is on this so if people don't get this delivered sure it's on doom and id software and bethesda and xenomax but it's also on on mick because it's his music people are wanting to buy Right, that's like a label saying, hey, this band's album is coming out in two months and the band didn't know they were supposed to write an album and pre-orders are already out. Like, that's a ridiculous thought. Mick also goes on to say that, of course, a lot of the tracks were being denied. A lot of the demos, the mock-ups um, were just saying, ah, it's rejected, it's not good enough. So he ended up making a total minutes release here. He has as four hours, 46 minutes and one second of music, which... That's a crazy amount of music, okay? That's like f f five, six, seven albums worth. And bands take like two years to write an album. And his contract admits that he officially had to actually do legally was only two hours and 22 minutes. It was half of the amount of music he ended up delivering. Now, somehow this just gets worse. The actual release date for the OST is coming up. And there's no contract yet with Mick and ID Software in any way to get things done. So he went straight to Bethesda because ID Software was just basically ignoring him. 
And he came to this kind of term stated from the contract that Bethesda gave him that he would produce 12 songs for inclusion in the OST. All 12 songs were to be selected by ID Software. ID Software had final approval. It was required to hand over all of his source files, stamps, raw assets, mix session. And the deadline was April 16th. And it was already May 7th. He had to produce an entire 12-song album for Doom within just over a month. Finals. Now, knowing that deadline is crazy, apparently if he needed more time, Bethesda said they'd be happy to amend the contract later. The deadline was therefore flexible, but as an incentive, they offered make a bonus if he did finish by April 16th. However, uh, we have Marty reaching out from ID Software saying that, no, that's not the case. This needs to be done absolutely by April 16th based on, uh, he said, consumer protection laws in some territories, which meant anyone who produced the collector's edition was entitled to a full refund if they didn't receive the OST by April 20th. Further, this absolute insanity, apparently there was someone named Chad Moseholder who was reached out to to make an alternative OST by cutting together songs using edited chunks of Mick Gordon's in-game score. And he was apparently working on this for at least six months. Meanwhile, Mick Gordon wasn't even told about this until E3. <laughs> the way he describes this, such as the edits from the alternative OST had been eyeballed in a slapdash way by copying audio files directly on top of each other without even a crossfade. To cover the transition, resulting in clips, uh, clicks, pops, clipping, abrupt tempo changes, awkward gaps, and jarring transitions. Some songs were just seamless loop files di ripped directly from the game's WYS package. And you look at these like, <laughs> like you, you might need to have a little bit of audio knowledge to understand how hilarious these waveforms are and how terribly cut and clipped they are and they make no sense together. But it's just... Like, you hire Chad, which I don't know where you got Chad off of Kijiji, okay? You'd expect that they'd at least know how to deal with crossfades and blending and editing audio. So this guy's going in there butchering Mick Gordon's two years of work here to create this shit alternative OST just so ID Software Bethesda can meet their deadline. Now, Marty, again, is just, is just pounding at Mick Gordon just like that, nonstop. With, with emails and messages and shitting on Mick Gordon's worth saying, no, we're going to go with this alternative OST that Chad made, <laughs> which is just a disgrace to, to audio in general. And audio engineers everywhere are probably crying even just reading that thing. And Mick Gordon's working on his thing, his, his OST, trying to get it done in time, working the last hours. And after all that, Marty, um, he responds... By taking over, he said that they would release Chad's version of this OST instead. He told Mick Gordon to hand over his tracks and Chad would assemble the final OST. Mick Gordon never heard the final version of whatever Chad did to it until the actual OST came out. Nothing was 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 fixed, um, he said here. But in some cases, they actually have been made worse all the songs and then on the credits oh my god poor 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 mick man to see author mick gordon and chad moseholder equaling him to chad a dude who went in there and somehow messed up the songs i don't know how you mess up mick gordon's beautiful work i don't know how you screw that up with all that there was inclusions of the hours of music that mick gordon created the rejected demos that you know they said oh we don't want to use this it was included anyways and mick gordon was never paid for that extra two like double the amount of of music that they asked for he never gets paid for this uh but marty reaches out again because the ost is not doing as well he's complaining he's blaming mick gordon for everything marty went on reddit and posted this huge Reddit thing here, which had thirty, almost 37,000 upvotes, where Marty is basically just complaining about Mick Gordon. Uh, there was a new settlement offer, which was six figures sum in return for taking full responsibility for the failure of the OST, in which these details, 
Marty would keep the Reddit post up indefinitely, which is just a slander on Mick Gordon, just an absolute destruction of his character that he's built up in his talent. He'd never retract his false accusations nor clarify his statement, and his story would be forever considered the truth. Uh, Mick Gordon could never discuss Doom Eternal, the OST, or the Reddit post. If he, uh, if he was ever asked, he'd have to say no comment, and he would pledge... He would never badmouth Marty or anyone working under the Xenomax umbrella, and he could never criticize any product developed by Xenomax, in which Mick Gordon promptly and properly basically told him to go to hell. <laughs> As he should. As he should. And this is so tough because during this, like he's getting he's getting threats. People would call his phone number, they would harass his other clients, email bomb his inboxes, and it's just he's dealing with all these these lies about him. Um, the company's trying to save face, buy him out, and still not properly pay him for his actual work. And then the consumers are the ones that get a bad product and not even a full product. You still can't listen to this thing on Spotify. Like, it, it's just, it's such a sad situation. Mick Gordon finally comes out and makes a statement, which again, go, please go read his statement. It's linked in the description below. It's It's quite long. It has all the details, way more than I went into. This is sad. It's 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 something that could have been so beautiful, you know, more the, more of the metal scene and the gaming scene coming together in a big way. The Doom soundtrack, huge, one of the biggest heavy music soundtracks ever made. And this was going to be the follow-up, and it just got absolutely shit on by poor management organization and a company that could give a shit about a creative like Mick Gordon, um, who... He does not deserve that treatment in any way. So that's it. Sad.